know about Jing Dong a bit from my end and about HRNA. I found this beautiful project and the research when I was interested in implementing pose estimation myself. Um, I went on papers with code. I was looking at different research there, uh, different projects. And um, HRNet was uh, beautiful in several aspects. First, there is a, it's a community already around this project of people writing issues in the Git. Um, there is a lot of updates coming and it's very well maintained. The code is very clear. Um, it's very well documented. And the paper itself is sometimes, it's not like this, but in this case it is. It's clear and you can understand what you're reading and what you're trying to, and whatever you're figuring out while reading the paper. Very well done research. I loved it. I'm, I also wrote a blog post about it. And I asked Jing Don to, to come in and teach us here and he, and he agreed. And again, really thank you, Jing Don. And with these words, I'm transferring it on to you. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Peter, for the invitation. So it's my honor to be here to present my work. So actually, my work is about high res. My talk is about high resolution network and a universal architecture for video recognition. So as we know, in computer vision, video recognition is a very important area. So here is uh, several examples. For example, image classification, object detection, and the semantic segmentation, and face and face alignment, and the post estimation. So as we know, a next date in 2012 actually win the image net challenge. So since then, Deep convolutional neural network has been dominant has been dominant solutions in computer vision. So after the next night, there's several maybe well-known networks have been developed. For example, Google Net. Google Net actually was a winner for Image Net Challenge in 2014. At that time, Google Net was sort of as a handcrafted architecture. Actually, later we found that there are many good properties for architecture design. For example, multi-branch design, multi-branch block. For example, here in this block, there are five branches. And another property is the in each block, the short connection, the short connection actually helps information flow. In the same year, the VGGNet also was developed. For VGGNet, actually, it is a sequence of modulized blocks. In 2015, I think uh, everyone in computer vision or in machine learning area know about this network Resonate. Actually, Resonate was developed by my colleagues at a Microsoft Researcher, my, my Microsoft Research Asia. So in this network, actually, it follow VGG design, use modularized blocks, but it use a skip connection for improving the information flow. At the time, we know that we can train 152 layers network. Also, ResNet was the winner of ImageNet Challenge in 2015. In 2016, another network, network called DenseNet actually followed the design of ResNet, but connect all the layers. So actually all those networks, NextNet, Google Net, VGNet, and ResNet, and, uh, and the DenseNet, all those networks actually are designed from image, net, image classification. But actually in computer vision, there are many other important visual recognition problems. For example here, Post estimation, semantic segmentation, face alignment, and object detection. 
So actually, we may have a question. So what's the next next architecture? Sorry. What's the next architecture? Is it applied to more visual recognition tasks? So before answering this question, let me first reveal the classification networks and how the current solutions solve those problems. First, let's look at a uh, classification network. So may, I think this network is well known called Nanet5. It was designed by Yang Kong in 1998. So in this architecture, actually, we can see that the input, the size is 32 by 32, and then this input image goes to a convolution and then a subsampling to reduce the size to 14 by 14. And then convolution and then subsampling to get a, a subsampling leading to a small, especially small feature maps. And then goes to full, fully connection layers and finally classifier. So what characters in this kind of ne network structure. So actually it connects the convolutions in series from high resolution to low resolution because of there are many down sample layers. So the resulting permutations actually is very small in, in, in the scale. This means that we can only get a low resolution limitation from this kind of network structure. So also this kind of design is followed by the previous networks for the AlexNet, VGGNet, GoogleNet, ResNet, AuthentNet, all follow this kind of design, progressively reduce the spatial size. So for the low resolution limitation, maybe it is enough for classification because we know that for classification, we do not care about the spatial information. We only care about the global classification, right? So, but for other problems, for example, for detection, we need to localize the box. We need to know the box position. For semantic segmentation, we need to label each pixel. And for face alignment, and the post estimation, we need to localize the position of the key points. This means that actually we need specially fine limitations. So previous solution actually try to use the classification network and do some modifications and then have a high resolution limitations. Let me give two mainstream solutions. One is, you, one is based on dilated convolution. So this example for, this is an illustration for the classification network. This block corresponds to high resolution and then medium resolution and a smaller and a smaller resolution. So by using dilated convolution, we may replace the smallest convolution with dilated convolution. Then we can have a large size resolution, a large size repetition. But in this kind of design, actually this will increase the computation complexity. So another popular solution is based on upsampling. Based on upsampling. So in this kind of solution, basically there are two stages. The first stage is, is the classification network. And the second stage is try to raise the resolution by using several upsampling layers. So here is a several example actually based on our sampling unit. 
I think if you are working on medical image, maybe you know UNET. And the second net, the net actually was developed in, I think, 2015 in computer vision area. And our glass, our glass, if you, you are working on human pulse estimation, maybe you know this kind of network structure. I think this network was, I think, developed in 2016. It was published in an ECCV paper. But we can see that all the network, network architectures look different, but actually they are the same. Actually, they are consider two stages. So in this two stages design, we can see that the resolution at the beginning it is high and then low and finally high gain. So because in the middle actually we only have the low resolution representation, this means that we already we already lose the spatial information even we have our sampling, our sampling uh, process, we still cannot recover the spatial information, uh, cannot recover the full spatial resolution. This means that actually the resulting resolution, the re resulting representation is weak in the position sensitivity. So we propose a lower high resolution representation learning backbone. We call it high, res uh, called high resolution network or H18. So we try to use H18 to ask answer this question. Actually, we will show that H18 can be applied to many, many tasks besides image classification. So here is the introduction for H18. Actually, H18 was published in uh, CPR 2019. In the conference paper, we only we only uh, presented the applications for human pulse estimation, and later we extended the H18 for other applications: the detection, segmentation, phase alignment, and so on. And the extended paper was accepted by PAMI. Maybe you know in VIA and machine learning, PAMI is a top journal, yeah. So in H18, what we want is to learn high resolution limitation so that the position sensitivity is strong, basically stronger there than previous two-stage networks or two-stage networks. And then we... <laughs> uh, we do not connect. Yes. I have a question about this. Um, why did you choose pose estimation as the first implementation for the backbone network? Sorry? Why did you choose pose estimation as that first implementation you were going to be using? Ah, uh, I see. This is a good question. Actually, uh, the reason that we have some experience on, on pose estimation when we proposed H18. So there's some stories about a detection and a semantic segmentation. For example, in semantic segmentation, we, we did this, the, the experiments. At that time, actually, they know, uh, I think they know good open source for semantic mm -hmm. segmentation yeah, mm -hmm. at that time. And even when we did experiments, we found that there's some, for, uh, I mean, the evaluation metric actually not consistent for many papers. Some papers, for example, I, I will, maybe I will, I will show the result uh, for, I think for Pascal, Pascal, I think Pascal, we will see, Pascal, we will see, I think maybe I'm not, I'm, I did not know that, I did not remember that data set name exactly. In that time, there are some evaluation based on uh, 59 classes and some scores are based on six classes. You know that for maybe for uh, 59 classes, the, the score is higher. <laughs> but mm. when we look at the papers, actually they confuse the scores. <laughs> mm. For detection, at that time, we found that the BN, maybe you know the uh, single BN actually, 
was not well implemented two years, uh, maybe two years ago. It's why we started from human post estimation. Mm. So you had the know-how and you saw that there is something missing in the research area specifically with this. And then when you started working, you saw, oh, we have something that can work for many other applications. <laughs> if, if, if I'm fo following your process. Actually, at the beginning, we tried to solve the segmentation. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. And then we found that the post estimation is easier. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I was curious about that. Hmm. Okay. But nowadays, you can find some open source for segmentation, MM segmentation. There are many implementations. Okay. Which would you recommend, by the way, if somebody wants to, let's say, has a bit of low computing power, wants to implement a high-end uh, segmentation network? Which one would you say is state-of-the-art today? Oh, I will show that actually we have, a, have an ECCV paper. Mm -hmm. We proposed, I will let, I'll introduce later, we proposed a contextual approach mm -hmm. to, to improve the segmentation. Basically, it is based, we call it OCR net. OCR net? OCR net. Object, object contextual limitation. Yeah, I will yeah. use it later. Yeah, yeah so I, I'll write it down to you in the email after, so we'll have the reference. I'm writing down in my comments to send it to you. Okay. We will add it, everybody. I will send it uh, in a link in Reddit, the newsletter, and the recording, you will have it later on. Mm -hmm. Sorry okay, for me. Okay, let me continue. So different from previous approach, actually, most of them based on classification networks, but we design the H1 network from scratch. It means that we do not base on do not base classification networks. Another property is that we maintain high resolution limitations through the whole process. Instead of recover recover recovering high resolution from real resolution like to the two-stage solution. So let me, before using the architecture design, let me start, let me start from the classification networks. So in classification network, we can see that this corresponds to high resolution convolutions. Actually the block corresponds to the channels or limitations and the arrow corresponds to operations. And then this medium resolution and it is a low resolution. So in classification network, those convolutions actually are, con are connected in series. So what we do actually is very simple. We connect those convolutions in parallel. We, we have a high resolution stream and the medium resolution stream and a low resolution stream. So you, you can see that those stream, uh, there are no interactions between those streams. This means that the high resolution cannot get information from low resolution and the medium resolution. But we know that for low resolution, the received field size may be higher. This may mean that the semantic degree is higher. But for high resolution, the position sensitivity is higher. So we try to we try to boost the high resolution of attention by, by using the information from low resolution. So what we do is we repeat the field across those, those streams. So let me see how to do the to do the do the field. Actually, it's very simple. Here is the illustration. So in this block, in this fusion block. So in, here we have three input, high resolution, medium resolution, and then low resolution. Output, we also have three outputs. So for the high resolution output, actually the operation is very simple. This operation is just identity. For the same resolution, from medium resolution to high resolution, we just use by linear sampling and a one by one conclusion to to align the number of channels. For low resolution, we also use bilinear upsampling. So maybe you have a question, why do not use, why we do not use convolution to do the upsampling? Actually, convolution is also okay. 
but uh, when we use convolution, the complexity, the time complexity will, will be higher, but it's actually the results, for example, the every precision will be also higher. So we consider, we consider the balance. So we choose to use by enough sampling and a one by one convolution. But for media resolution output, for down sampling here, his down sampling from high resolution to medium resolution. Actually, in this case, we found that we need to use, we need to use straight convolution. The reason is that actually, the reason is that, for example here, suppose for the high resolution input, the size is 100 by 100, and the channel number is 50. And in the medium resolution, the size for is 50 by 50, and then the channel number will be 100. You can see that 100 by 100 by 50 is larger than 50 by 50 by 100. This means that we have information loss here, right? So this is why we choose to use choose convolution to reduce the information because we have we can learn something to minimize the information loss. It's why we choose straight convolution. Again, for our sample, we use by enough sampling and one by one convolution. For the low resolution output, actually for down sampling, we still use straight convolution. And for the same resolution, we just use identity connection. So yeah, this if I can ask if something okay. about this. Um, when you started the research, did you directly go with the hybrid model of up, down, and down, up? Or did mm -hmm. you start just with up, down, saw results, and thought, okay, we want to make it better, and then added the, the down, up uh, branch? You mean first up and then down, right? On the previous slide, you showed us, like, first you start going down, but then you lose information uh, on, on because you lose the lower resolution semantic information, and then you added the, yeah, exactly. And then you added the up arrows to keep that info, right? You mean the blue, blue arrow? Yeah, so you started with the blue and then you added those red. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So but the, on, your pro, on your research process, this is very interesting to anybody who's doing research to understand oh, the methodology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a good question. Yeah, so you mean how to get the idea, right? <laughs> yeah, how and what was the part? Did you test something, saw something's not working, improved, or from the beginning, you know, this is not going to be good enough, we're going to make it this way, like, and then you have just one time test on the network. Actually, this yeah. is a good question. I, I, I need to use one slide to maybe you, you will get the idea why we use this kind of uh, design. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it is. Actually, this actually is a fusion module. In this, in this case, we use four streams. Actually, it is similar to three streams. Mm -hmm. So look, for the regular convolution, for the regular convolution, for this, the L corresponds to regular convolution, and we divide the input channel into four groups, and the output channels also four groups, and then we decompose the regular convolution. Like, like this, actually this is exactly same to the original regular convolution. Basically, you know, for convolution, it is matrix vector multiplication, right? Mm -hmm. So by decomposition, we mean that we, di we divide the vector into four parts and then divide the matrix into four by four blocks, you know, four by four blocks. And then this means that you will have four by four smaller matrix vector multiplication. Exactly, there are 16 arrows here. Mm -hmm. So compare this one and this one. The only difference is that the resolution is changed in this one. Yeah. So, so my initial idea is try to, to reduce, try to reduce the spatial redundancy in convolution. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is yeah. why we have, have a feeling. So from my talk, I first introduced parallel connection and then feeling actually, my idea is not like that way. <laughs> mm, so you start actually from a bigger, bigger type of connection and then you reduced it to have better computation probably speed. 
um, attached to it. Also, another idea is why we, why I have the idea for high resolution. Mm -hmm. So actually, maybe four years ago, I, I have a question. I had a question asked myself. So why we need to reduce the resolution in, for example, ResNet or VGNet? Because for segmentation or detection or post estimation, we still need high resolution. Why need, we need to downsample layers? So actually, this work try to answer those questions. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. This was my next question to you, but now you answered it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay, let me continue. Yes, thank you. So actually, the architecture is very simple. I try to summarize uh, the changes compared to the previous the design. So we connect the high resolution and the low resolution convolutions parallel rather than in series. And also we maintain the high resolution through the whole process instead of recovering the high resolution. And uh, another property is that we repeat the fusion across the across the resolutions. Actually, this will strengthen the high resolution limitations and the low resolution limitations. As a result, we can have a, a, a limitations. The resolution is high and the position sensitivity is strong. So here is the architecture actually, I mean instance. Instanti instantiation when we when we uh, did the experiment on human post estimation and then later actually we have some small h and basically the idea is simple so here we use the modularized design so we also have four stages uh, in the third stage and the fourth stage we actually repeat the blocks, for example, for in third stage, we repeated the blocks four times, and then the fourth stage repeated the blocks three times. Maybe the, this kind of design is not optimal for HR At that time, we just set the set the number. We do not we do not did um, many experiments to optimize the number of blocks here. So. You know that for different applications, we can we need a different uh, capacity. For example, in ResNet, we have ResNet 18, ResNet 850, and even ResNet 152. So in that case, ResNet can adjust the steps. But, but in our initial design, we adjust the capacity by tuning the, the number of channels here. So in our design, the number of channels actually is much smaller than Resonate. For example, in Resonate, we, we know that the, channels, the channel number may be 256, but in our design, C is equal to only 32 or 48. So actually, when, when I present our work for the last year, there always one question is the complexity higher than resonate? Actually, the answer is no. So because we have smaller number of channels, this means that we will have similar parameter complexity and the computer complexity with resonate. So now let me uh, introduce the first application, human post estimation. So actually, we know that human post estimation is very important. The, many practical applications, for example, for short, short video, right? So for human post estimation, basically there are two kind of solutions, two kind of pipeline, pipelines. One is called top-down solution. This means that we first detect the pose from the image and then estimate the pose for each pose. Another one is bottom-up solution. It means that we do not have person detector. We start from key point estimator, and then we group the predicted key points together. Each group corresponds to one person. 
So in this experiment, we, we only use top-down solution because we just want to show the power of a trinet. Because in top bottom-up solution, so some research actually focus on how to group those key points into person. So actually, uh, in uh, for human pulse estimation, we only use the high resolution output. So here is a comparison with the previous resonator based method. The left four columns actually are all based on resonate. Simple baseline actually is approach also proposed by uh, my colleague at Microsoft Association. And the, this column actually comes from Face++, a startup company, company in China. And this is Mask from Facebook. And we can see that for our approach, H18 W32 actually, here the number corresponds to the average precision. And average precision actually measures the localization uh, accuracy for the key points. We can see that it's based on the previous solution, similar baseline. We also have the uh, parameter complexity and the computing complexity here. For example, for similar baseline, we can see that 68.5 for G flops. G flops, it is 35.6, but for our approach, H1 W32, actually, we only use half number of parameters and the complexity is also half. We, our approach can also get a uh, higher number of parameters. We can see that we can increase the number of parameters. We can have higher average precision score. And then this column corresponds to our approach can also get benefit from more training data. So this is a, a comparison for average precision Oh, here means I, I want to say that after we published the h paper in last year's CPR, then many follow, follow works actually use, especially for post estimation, actually use h as the backbone, and many improvements also are based on h So here is a detailed comparison. So yeah, we have we have seen the AP. Here we also see the average code. We can see that average code also based 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 in similar baseline. We can see that. So here I try to answer how H1 eight improves the quality, the human post estimation quality. So we compare we compare the quality from two perspectives. One is key point localization. Because in post estimation, we need to localize. Also, classification, also classify the key point in, for example, left elbow or right elbow, right? Here we can see that for localization accuracy, we have 1.2 gain. But for type, this means classification, key point classification we only get one point, uh, point, uh, point one improvement. This actually shows that most improvement actually from the localization. Why we can have localization improvement? Because we have high resolution. This means that actually h can achieve high resolution, uh, higher position sensitivity resolution, uh, reputation. So another one, I also show how the fusion help improve the helps improve the performance. We can see that without fusion, we can only have seventy point eight, but with fusion, we can have seventy three point four average precision. This again shows that we can have more than two points improvement by using the fusion module. So if I can have a remark here for, for those who are listening, again, this is a beautiful research process. Um, there were two things tested out and proved here. First uh, is um, 
the, the positivity for localization, which is dependent on the higher resolutions, tested out and proven. Second is uh, what uh, Jing Dong saw, told, told us before about the original idea that coming from four channels to four channels, um, you want to keep all, all the information. That's why they had the cross, cross uh, connections happening there. Yes. And again, the ablation test exactly proves that. This is a very nice process to test out your original hypotheses and ideas and to see how they're working really. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes, <laughs> So here is an application to semantic segmentation. I think most of you know about uh, semantic segmentation. In semantic segmentation, we need to predict the label for each pixel. So here is several examples. For example, the first, first row is a street scene segmentation. It actually it is useful for auto driving. For the second row is about uh, actually human passing. The third row is a uh, scene, scene segmentation. So actually in segmentation also, later I will show application to face alignment. In segmentation and face alignment, we found that actually we need to use all the outputs, not only the high resolution, we need, we need a medium resolution and a lower and a low resolution. Actually, how to combine those those representations? We just concatenate them together. We do not do any uh, special process. Actually, later we found that if we have other process for combining those uh, representations, we can have higher result, better result. So here we compare HRNet with the previous the result developed. And you know, developed from Google, right? And uh, PSPNet from since time, another startup company in China. And uh, UNET, UNET++ actually is a, a stronger improvement of UNET. So we can see that for MIU, MIU actually is magically evaluating the segmentation performance. For MIU, we can see that only our results is higher than 80. And for the flops, we can see that we only uh, our <laughs> is much smaller than, for example, deep level and PSP8. For parameter complexity, we, we can see that our is the lowest. So we can also increase the capacity, and then our result also get got improved. This actually over Cityscape validation data set. So we also have uh, results on Cityscape test. For H1.8, we can get 81.6 MRU score. And later, as mentioned before, we propose an OCR, Object Context and Reputation Approach. I will show later how, how the OCR approach works. So we can get 0.9 improvement. So I need to, I want to say that before April this year, our approach based on H18, OCR, and another ECCV paper, SegFix, try to, SegFix actually try to improve the, um, the boundary of the segmentation, in the segmentation. Uh, before, April to, uh, before April, our approach is the best one. And then, NVIDIA actually published, uh, published a paper, I think it's May, this goal is the best one in the cityscapes second thing leaderboard, the best one. So I also read their paper and found that the approach actually also based on H18 plus OCR. And then by combining their so-called hierarchical multi-scale attention scheme. So this is for Cityscape segmentation leaderboard. So in segmentation, another well-known data set ADE 20K actually is from MIT. 
currently in the in this leaderboard, the rank one solution is from AI AI innovation. Also, they based on H18 and uh, OCR. This means that actually for H18 we have increasing uh, interest in the research area in the research community. Oh, this past context. This is what I have. Peter asked my asked me a question. Why we started from post estimation? <laughs> so this I, I here I, my my I explained that there's some problem in the evaluation metrics. For example, in past context, actually before our paper, there are two evaluation metrics. One is 59 another one 62 actually we spent spent long time to identify the reason even i discussed many discussed with many researchers some of some from australia some from usa to see how they evaluate the performance particularly on particle context finally I, we found that some papers are actually based on 59 classes, some based on 60 classes. You can see that actually, if if you run experiments based on 59 classes, you will get higher results. <laughs> so another leap validation that said leap actually the human passing. What is that in the Pascal? What is that other class that makes it 60? That's probably something relevant then. If that's the exact boundary, is it like a non class or something? Uh, yes, background class. Background class? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, AIP actually is a, a human passing data set. Actually, we, we have the basic result at that time. I want to, I want to mention that there are many pre Previous approach actually use additional information for human passing, for example, post animation, process, post information, or edge information. So face uh, face alignment, actually, we know that the face alignment actually we try to localize the key points in the face image. Actually, in our paper, we have results for four data sets. Here I just uh, Show the results on two challenges that said one is WFRW. In this data set, actually, there are 98 landmarks or 98 key points. AFLW actually, the size is bigger, but the landmarks only, uh, there are only 19 landmarks. Is the evaluation actually, for evaluation, because they, these two data sets actually use different evaluation metrics. Because we need to normalize the face. Different face maybe have different spatial size. How to normalize uh, the, the localization error? It, for this two data set actually is different. The WFW. WFW actually I think was released in 2000, uh, I think 2018, 2018. So when we did the experiment only a few methods or only a few papers reported the result. This and, uh, w, is, w is uh, face uh, face boundaries, right? You mean W? What does WFW mean? Maybe somebody here also. I, I'm not sure. Um, Why the face? The face. I did not remember the name. I think the first time is white. Why the face? Other facial landmarks in the wild. You know why? You may be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, actually, in this data set, there are actually a test accuracy or test error. You can see that for this column, our error is the smallest. And this means our approach is better. And in this data also provides six, uh, I think, six evaluations for different, uh, uh, different cases. For example, post change, express change, uh, innovation change, I think this is makeup, occlusion or blue. In all the six cases, our is based. 
and uh, for AFW, the result are similar. Yeah, but actually, I want to point out that uh, some mess out. We we found some methods use additional information for for example three D information, and uh, for three D information they can boost the performance. But we only compare the method without use without using any additional information. So that's all for the face alignment. For object detection, for object detection, we just need to localize the object using the box form. We do not uh, design new detection method. We just use H1 8 to as a backbone for the replace resonate. So we know that in object detection and the instance segmentation, we need to handle the scale change for the object because the object maybe have different size. So we also use hierarchical repetitions, hierarchical or multi-level repetitions to handle the to handle the scale change in object detection. We do, do not have it. Question, if if I can, sorry if I, it's in the middle. Um, about this mm -hmm. about this diagram, you showed it also before, uh, where mm -hmm. you added the gray area, the connections between the lower resolutions also. If, if, if I understand it correctly, but maybe here is my mistake. This gray area is very similar to the just the layer before, right? It's the same exact idea. You have the different resolutions attached mm -hmm. to the higher resolution uh, channel. And here mm -hmm. you have the same thing. So basically you just added another, uh, tra tra I think you call it translation layer, right? For this, yeah. In this part? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We first coconut those outputs and then do down sampling. This yeah. actually just make the, uh, the process uh, simple. We can have mm -hmm. other forms to, to other ways to, get the multi-label repetitions. And the concatenation is, is, is what form? Concatenation, just a concatenation. Yeah. We upsample, oh, uh, yeah. uh, this, we upsample, to upsample it without changing the number of channels. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, it's just regular upsampling, nothing more. Yeah. Okay. We choose mm -hmm. this one just because we want to have a consistent uh, limitation consistent to segmentation and post estimation, and also make this kind of uh, design simple. As I mentioned before, we do, we do not de uh, develop a new detection method. We just uh, use H1 as a backbone. Here we first show the result on faster CN. Here we have four groups of results. Each group for each group, the resonate H1 8 have similar time, uh, similar parameter complexity and uh, computing complexity. We can see that. Let's focus on average precision. We can see that we always have improvement compared to, for example, resonate 101, 101, 152, and even resonate, right? And uh, we also applied uh, H1 8 to a extended version of fast lesson called Cascade RCN. I, Cascade RCN, I think it was published in 2000, uh, in CPR 2018. In this case, we also have improvement, right? So let him, let's see the improvement in the small scale objects. We can see that the improvement actually based higher than the overall average precision improvement. This means that for small, it means that we need to detect a small object. In this case, high resolution is much more helpful. This is why we can have higher improvement for small object. So we also have result for instance segmentation. In instance segmentation, we need to get the mask for each object. See, again, we just apply h into a well-known framework mask CN. We can see that for mask, mask means a segmentation. B, bounding box means a box. For, because in mask CN, we output the bounding box and also the mask. Again, we have better result for average precision 
and we also have higher improvement for small object. So actually, in our paper, we have more result for different uh, different detection frameworks. For example, Fox Fox, I think is an anchor free optimization method and the Sentinel and a hybrid task cascade. In all those frameworks, our approach get a higher performance than Resonate. So as I mentioned before, when I presented uh, this work before, there's always a question, always a question. So H1 8 might take more money, more memory or and more time. Actually, it's not true. So we report the runtime performance, runtime performance here. For example, for human post estimation, let me just focus on the, I think the inference, inference time or inference memory. We can see that inference time is still higher than a simple baseline resonate 152. So actually this time as reported on PyTorch, at that, at that time, PyTorch actually only support dynamic, dynamic graph. This means that actually for dynamic graph, this means that the multi-branch, multi-branch implementation can, can take more time because multi-branch, in multi-branch case, they actually, each branch, uh, I mean, the, they uh, run each branch one by one, not in parallel, but in series. So if we, if we have careful design or careful implementation, the speed will be higher. This is for post estimation. But for semantic simulation, we can see that for inference time, we can see that our way is much smaller, right? Compared to then deep lab and the PSP net. And for detection, we'll have similar, similar observations. Similar observation, we can have lower inference time and a higher, higher result. I can even add to it. I did my own small, small benchmark when I implemented uh, HRNet on mm -hmm. my machine, on my computer. You know, it's a bit of an old one now. It has a old type of um, uh, GPU on it. I had inference mm -hmm. time for all the poses in, a, in one frame. If there are three poses for all of them combined of 0 0.4 seconds. Yes. Yeah. So, so one, uh, one question is here, how to pre-train the H18? Because we know that in, in object detection, in semantic segmentation, immediate pre-training actually helps the performance. Without immediate pre-training, immediate pre-training actually the performance is much lower than uh, the network with imaging pre-training. So we also have pre-training, pre-train the networks. Oh, I, I do not include the clarification header here. Actually the clarification header actually is very simple, just uh, progressively aggregate the high resolution and medium resolution and low resolution between together and then finally get a, a low resolution representation as a vector for clarification. So when we, Mm, train H18 on ImageNet, we did not expect that we can have higher classification performance. But surprisingly, we found that the performance is slightly better than Resonate. It's interesting, but we do not know the reason. So here, I we propose uh, H18 actually I have shown several applications, segmentation, detection, pose, and face alignment. This actually is a universal architecture compared with previous networks, DenseNet, ResNet, which is and GoogleNet, and LexNet. 
So here is summary H and eight. Uh, I mean the impact in the in the community society. So H and eight actually is the standard in post estimation, and uh, in semantic segmentation, more and more research works actually are based on H and eight. But in object detection, we hope we can we hope that more researchers or more research works actually use. Uh, HR8. But actually, at a, at a current uh, uh, observation, actually, we can have some improvement, but the improvement, improvement is not so, very, not so significant. So besides those applications we may, I mentioned before, actually, we can have high result for face detection. We will release the source code for face, face detection soon and also i have seen some some researchers actually use h for pedestrian detection also for satellite image segmentation actually h is very very prop very helpful for this kind of problem and for brain segmentation we also have results so here is our page summarizing uh summarizing um, some applications or some challenges actually using h I want to mention that in ICCV last year, we, we all know that the challenge Coco key point, Coco challenge and MapRally uh, challenge. In Coco key point and dense pose challenge, almost all the, all the I think all the participants Participants use H one eight, and then for MapRally panoramic segmentation, the winner is from Google. Actually, they also use H one eight. In their paper, for single model, H one eight performed the best. So, so actually, in computer vision or in machine learning, we know that NAS are neural architecture search. So one question is here, we already have NAS, why we still need to need architecture design? Actually, the answer is very simple. In NAS, we need to know where to perform search. So design actually try to answer the question where, try to provide a uh, bait search uh, space. Here is an example, I see this paper is from Google, published in this year's CVPR. They're called Spinet. They try to uh, handle the same problems, same problem in the previous clarification in the work. The resolution is uh, is decreased. So, but they propose a nice solution to to address, address this problem. So, actually, art design. There are many other ways for architecture design. For example, how to combine or how to use human intelligence or common sense for architecture design. And another direction is, is to design small network or mobile networks with small num smaller number of parameters and the lower computation complexity. Also, another design is, is that we need to combine the hardware or consider the hardware for the design. Because we know that maybe we have a lower computation complexity for some G flops, but actually in long time, the, the speed might not be as, as expected. So this means that we need to consider the hardware. hardware. Another is for different applications, for different tasks, we may need to design different height by considering the, 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 the special problem. Here I want to use two works for head architect design. One is semantic segmentation, actually it's published in this year's ECCV. Another one is the bottom up of human post estimation. It's about one paper from CVPR 2000. Uh, 
So actually for semantic simultaneity, I do not explain the definition again. So in deep learning, the semantic simultaneity actually started from FCN fully convolution network. Just to use the backbone, for example, resonant H on it, and then output the uh, cement as uh, the simulation map. But in the previous solution, actually the so-called context model. So there are two famous context model. One is PPM. It's from PSPNet since time, and SPP from Google Deep Lab used in Deep Lab. Actually, these these two modules actually try to use regularly sampled positions to help improve the reputation of the center pixel. In PPM, they reduce the spatial size of the reputation. In SPP, they use a dilated convolution. You can see that it's also called a whole convolution. Still, for example, this is three by three, and we can sample the positions, nine pixels, but there are many zeros between those pixels because pixels. This is what we call a spatial context. They do not consider the, the features of the center pixel, just the specially sampled the position. So what we do, actually we call object context. Why we call object context? Actually, we, we know that a pixel only has RGB value. For RGB value, we cannot know the label, right? So, so now, what's the label for an RGB pixel? The label actually is the category of the object that the pixel belongs to. Actually, the label means the object level, not the pixel level. So this is our starting point. For example here, the red point, the label actually is a car. This means that the, the object is a car. So starting from this intuition, we try to use the object reputation to help boost the reputation of the current pixel. We call it object context. Object context actually is a, is a set of pixels lying the corresponding object. So the question is, we do not have the object context because this is what we want. So we can actually try to, say, uh, try to cut out the object, right? So we actually, we start off from a cause segmentation, a cause segmentation. And then this is the current feature maps. This red pixel, we try to improve its reputation. So what we do, we first, we first start from feature maps and the cause segmentation, cause segmentation. we compute uh, the reputation for each region, for each cause segmentation region. And then this, so we also have a feature vector right here. And then we do transform and then, and, the, and then compute the similarities between this vector and uh, those K vectors. And then we perform wedged, wedged aggregation of those K vectors. Actually, this, this process of transform, 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 if you, you are familiar with uh, self-tension, actually, this process actually is almost the same self tension. Basically, we try to use, use we try to we try, sorry. I think maybe somebody here is not on mute. Okay. Yeah, I think I will mute the person. So I do not want to explain more details about how to aggregate, how to aggregate the, 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 the features of the cost region into the red pixel, but actually the idea is simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in cost thing we do not know, uh, and the, we do not know, we do not know the region the pixel belongs to, we only have the probability 
that the pigs belong to one region. So this that's why we have weighted pooling. The weight means that the pig, uh, the probability that this pigs belong to some region. Okay. So here is a comparison with uh, ASPP and PPM from parameter complexity and memory complexity and this this called uh, time complexity is a long time also MRE. We can see that our OCI is much better than previous the result PPM and SPP. So here is the result, a result about a five data set. A seed scape lip and a particle congress ID and a cocoa stuff. We have already uh, seen the result on CD square test let's skip past const. Here is ADE actually. ADE we can see that for H on it, it actually is lower, it's not so high. So we found that actually I, I want to mention that besides the resolution in segmentation, actually object context or context also very important for uh, for segmentation performance. But in the five data set, we found that in Cityscape, in Cityscape, the context is not very important for H1 8. But for Pascal context, ADE, and LIP, or other data set, context is also very important. In, in particular, for this kind of data set, ADE 20K, we can see that if we only use high resolution, the performance actually is not so high. But if we combine object context, we can have 1.6, 1 1.5 uh, improvement. This for Coco staff, we, we can see that the results is better. So when we submit this paper to ECCV, our result is best. Maybe there's some papers report a higher result uh, after the ECCV submission deadline. I do not check carefully for those results. So another head, head active design. Here we, for here I show the application to bottom up post estimation. So as mentioned before, in bottom up human post estimation, we do not have person detector. We only have key points detect, and then use the grouping method to to divide the post divide the key points into different persons. So this means that we need to handle the scale. We need to handle the scale for the bottom up post estimation. Because in real images, for example, this post, the two posts are actually very small, this, this actually is large. So what we do actually is very simple. Though, though there are many, uh, I think, implementing implementation details and uh, design details, but the high level idea is very simple. We up sample, up sample the limitation. This is different from previous pyramid, uh, spatial pyramid. In those uh, efficient, the high resolution is only one over four, but here we can one over two. We call it higher, is the reason why, why we call it higher, higher feature map, a feature pyramid. So this is the basic idea. I will do not uh, show the details, but I want to show that actually for this kind of method, we can have more than 70 AP score. This is the first, I think this is the first, uh, first method reporting the score higher than 70. Now here is the more results. So I, I'm going to conclude my talk. So actually I, sh I, I present many applications based on H18. What message I want to, sh want to say is that actually H18 is a universal backbone. Uh, we designed H18 actually uh, from other, I mean, for example, segmentation detection tasks 
other than only from classification. Actually, we have shown results. All the results actually better than ResNet. Another, uh, in another one, I also showed some applications for head architecture design, especially for segmentation and bottom up post estimation. And then uh, we have released all the codes, all the codes for all those applications, include all HRNet applications and the OCR net for semantic segmentation and uh, high HRNet. Or we will release all the codes. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you, Jim Dong. Um, anybody who, if you have a question, a comment, feel free. Uh, people were quiet during the lecture, but it's a good time now also. Um, otherwise, I have questions. So. Okay. Um, I think I just, uh, there's a message in the chat box. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, Jim Dong. Take it. Uh, I have seen, I see one question. Yeah. Could you three, um, what's the reason for the tapes? Oh, I mean, the question is why the tapes of HNA is not so important? Oh, so this is a good question. Actually, this might not be true. In HNA, the tapes are also important, actually. So at that time, we do not uh, did an operation study for the tapes. But actually, we have small h In small h the depth is smaller. This does not, this does not mean that depth is not important. Actually, depth is also important. So maybe the following question here will be, um, why didn't you use the depth as, let's say, ResNet type of depth? Why stop at the low 48 or, or uh, I think, 52 and not go up to 100? Um. Yeah, this is a good question. So you know that uh, when you design a network, you need to test the performance, especially for imaginary classification pre-training. You know that this will take much, much time. Mm -hmm. So we just uh, did a simple design without optimizing uh, every choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there may be a better choice for h design. So the basic concept, we, or the basic message we want to deliver in h is that high resolution is important. That's why we call it high resolution. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Edgar asks here um, how well the architecture scales down. HRNet uh, W16, HRNet W8, for example. So this is a good question. Actually, we have some result uh, for this small HRNet uh, in segmentation and even in phase detection. So we, we currently found that, for example, in segmentation, our small, small HRNet actually performs uh, better than the previous uh, uh, previous segmentation method. But another issue, another effort we are making is that we try to combine, for example, depth-wise convolution or group convolution to reduce the the I mean to reduce the redundancy in convolution. Is actually try to specify, specifying the convolution weights. This is also helpful to reduce uh, the, to reduce the, the redundancy. I'm not sure whether I'm have answered the question how well the architecture scales down. Yeah. In our in our uh, in the GitHub actually we provide uh, the pre-trained models for HRNet. Uh, w16 and uh, I think I'm not sure whether w8 but we actually we have the pre-trained models for w8 
Yeah. You've I, been I, I think I've seen this in the open source. I think I've seen uh, W32 and W48 in the open source for HR. When I was, I worked with it about two months ago. Maybe it changed. I, 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 I'm sure that W16 actually was shared in the, I think at least in the segmentation, in the segmentation, in the segmentation code. Mm. Okay. We have another question mm -hmm. from Shunik. Um, we hypothesized that classification does not really need high resolution data. Do you have any intuition uh, behind the better results in classification data too? This is, this is a good question. We, so as I mentioned in my presentation, we do not ex we do not expect that the classification performance is better than we don't resonate, but we found that it's slightly better. So actually, we do not know the reason why it is slightly better. We also do not do not uh, do any investigation to find the reason. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> this is still, uh, this is still, remains unsolved, yeah. <laughs> I have a question, um, the difference between higher uh, HRnet and HRnet. When mm -hmm. I read higher HRnet paper, I don't think I've seen a benchmark that compares the two in accuracy. I've seen compa com comparison in, in um, um, inference speed, but not in accuracy of prediction. I think you showed us accuracy that higher HRnet is better in accuracy than HRnet for COCO test dev, was mm -hmm. it? You mean I just like that. Higher h one eight. Yeah. Uh, here. I think this one here. Yeah. Um, does this mean that higher h one eight is actually just not only in computation speed but also in accuracy better than h one eight, or am I missing something here? Oh, in this comparison, we do not uh, we do not include the complexity. Higher h one eight actually, for example, in H N S W forty eight and high H N S W forty eight actually, the complexity for high H N S is higher than H N S. But if you combine it with the bounding box, because uh, because H N S is a top down, right? It's this top bottom approach. If you combine the computation time of the bounding box uh, network you're using before and then you're using a H N S, it should be uh, more computation time. You you mean uh, your question is about top down and uh, bottom up yeah. approach, right? Yeah, so exactly. this is a good question. Many papers claim that bottom-up approach is more efficient, right? Yes. In time and actually, I'm not actually I don't I'm not sure whether this kind of claim is true. Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> this because in our observation, in our in our experiments, we observed that bottom-up method might not be efficient than top-down method when we compa also comparing the score, average precision score. Because for example, maybe you know, AE, AE, we mean associative, associative embedding. I'm not sure. Associative actually is very slow. <laughs> well. Yeah, very, very slow. But in our method, we, in, in our method, this is the archival paper, not a CV sharp paper. In our method, we use uh, a method like um, like sentinel, not a sentinel. This will reduce the the time complexity for grouping. Yeah. So, so actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Another case, another another case is that in real problems, actually. For example, in, uh, in short video, usually only one person in one image. Mm -hmm. In this case, actually, maybe top-down method is more efficient. <laughs> so yeah. if, if, I were, if I was focused on accuracy, let's say computation time is not my interest right now, but accuracy is, you'd recommend using higher HRnet for post-estimation detection accuracy. You right? mean for top-down or, top or bottom-up? Uh, I don't care top down, bottom up, whichever one is better for, for me in accuracy and inference. Which would you think will be? So, this is a good question. We do not have the runtime for higher HNH. I'm not, not, 
not quite sure about the, the runtime complexity. Maybe I will check it later, yeah. Yeah, and if, okay, actually, by the way, well, if you do check it, please let us know. I'll also add it in the references, it's interesting. From what I read in the paper, the computation time for higher HNet is higher, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Yeah, higher. <laughs> I'm the researcher. Um, but if I'm looking at accuracy of, of, of estimation, just accuracy of estimation, computation time is no issue for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't care if the approach is bottom up or top down. Uh, it's, yes. it's, it doesn't matter. I just want the highest accuracy. Should I be using oh, I, higher internet? I, I suggest uh, currently you need to use top down method. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to deploy to segmentation into real, real applications, mm -hmm. top, top down. In, because in bottom up, there are many other issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's important to know. Thank you. I had people ask this question, so that's a, that's an important question. Also, by the way, in the Reddit, we had somebody ask the question. I don't think he's on the talk today. Um, the question was um, for black and white images. Um, how? First of all, let's say just for inference time. Do you have any estimate to to know if the accuracy degrades, and if so, by how much? <laughs> Black and white images in for inference time, if the accuracy decreases for eight minutes. Yeah. You mean black and white, only gray image? Yeah. This actually does not influence the, uh, the inference, uh, I mean, does not affect the inference time. And, and the accuracy? The accuracy, we do not have the result, result mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. No, no, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a couple more questions here, so let's see. Well, how much how much time do you have, Jingdong? I have about a list off, but okay. I can make it to oh, okay. your way. Yeah, okay. So, um, so this is this is a question that you know when when the paper is presented, the code is there, it, it everything looks clear and easy and simple. But when you're doing the research itself, it's not like this. Many times we run into, you know, blockages and stuff that are not working and things we didn't expect that are not working or are working. Like when you were doing this research, you, uh, what, what type of, um, of obstacles did you run by? Like major obstacles for you? Uh, this is a good question. So you mean obstacles, right? Yeah, it could be, you know, uh, methodically something is not working, computationally something is not working, um, <laughs> labels are not right. Like, like you showed the, the 5960 label for Pascal. It's a very good yeah. example of something that is unexpectedly happening when you're doing the research. Yeah, this is a good question. Actually, I, th I think the main challenge for, for deep learning is computing resource. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned before, four years ago, I have the, the idea why we do? Why we need the downsampling in the photon resonate? So, at that time, we do not have enough computation resource. And two years ago, uh, in Microsoft, we have a, a company-wise uh, servers so that we can have enough GPU resource at least for image and clarification. So, mm -hmm. first one, the uh, computation resource is, is very important. The second one is actually in deep learning, in my opinion, actually, the care for implementation is very, very important. Maybe mm -hmm. we have the same idea. We have the same idea. One can, got, one can get a higher result, and another one get a low result. How to implement it? How to do the implementation is very important, but mm -hmm. actually, this depends on different problems. We need careful, we need careful implementation. Yeah. Which actually is, is a good is a good thing you're remarking. Um, that's also another question. Why did you choose PyTorch over TensorFlow? If it was two years ago, four years ago, PyTorch was just in the beginning, right? Um, but still, you chose to go with it. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose PyTorch over TensorFlow, especially if this was two years ago when TensorFlow was more Established. It's a good, good question. Actually, we tried for the MXNet and uh, and uh, and uh, PyTorch, and even we also have TensorFlow. Tried TensorFlow, 
But finally, we found that PyTorch actually is more friendly for research. Mm. Maybe TensorFlow friendly for product. And mm -hmm. at the beginning, I mentioned it is also a good, a good choice. But later we found that maybe they maybe more engineers actually and more researchers actually use PyTorch and PyTorch grows quickly. So that's why we chose PyTorch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good, good thing. Uh, the growth quickly many times is an important measure of, of a tool or a framework to use. You want to look yeah. at what's growing. I mean, because you know it's going to be supported well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have actually, a. I mean, actually, yeah. you know, I thought you also have some bugs sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me <Yeah>. about it. <laughs> I actually wrote also in the blog about HRNet some bugs with PyTorch, I think, there. I think we, we had a question from the audience. Because uh, I have more, but it's important the audience gets to ask. Um, so Ido is asking, um, have you tried incorporating the high-low resolution fusion in non-visual tasks? So uh, this is a good point. We also try to try to, for example, apply Chinese to natural language, but we do not have enough time or have bad ways to investigate the application in a non-visual application. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so, um, by the way, everybody, feel free to ask on the audio, you know, we're reading it for you, it's fine, but you can also use your voice, it's, uh, it's allowed, permitted here. It's uh, always every time on the virtual events, people like to do the chat, I don't know why, maybe, um, there's like, I don't know, feel free to use audio, it's okay. Um, and Jing Nong, about what you started mentioning, actually, I had the question exactly about this. Um, what, what, mm -hmm. what, what training times did you encounter when you were training the network? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, uh, for the training time, actually, HRNet is is a lot higher than ResNet for the same same uh, theoretical complexity. HRNet is lower. Yeah. It, is it, uh, on, a, on let's say on a V hundred? I don't know which app, which type of GPU you used, or let's say on one V hundred. What is an estimated training time for pause estimation HRNet on Cocoa? Oh, pause estimation, right? Yes. You mean? In, oh, not immediate immediate prediction. For post yeah. estimation, actually, at that time, I, I think we use uh, V V one hundred. Maybe for we actually we train we train the networks about two hundred epochs. I think okay. two or three days. Two or three days. Yeah. Two or three days. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody just, I don't know if you had a chance to train a Viva 100 or no, these machines, they're about, if you're paying your own money, they're about five to $10 an hour uh, to run and you're training it for days. You can imagine the costs. I sometimes do these with my own money and I'm not in university, so it's, it can be costly these. And, and you have many iterations, right? You don't just have one and that's it. You're trying different things. You're doing hyperparameter optimization. Um, by the way, um, how long the process of hyperparameter, if you ever did, hyperparameter optimization was for you from the moment you had the basic architecture and then trying the different constructs. You mean um, hyperparameter, hyperparameter, right? Yeah. Uh, this is a good question, actually. Actually, we tried several hyperparameters. One is how frequent, how frequent for the how frequent we repeat the fusions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the one, this is the first hyperparameter. The second one is how many modularized blocks in, in each stage. Yeah. We list two choices, list two hyperparameters. Actually, uh, we, how we did it, how we how we choose the hyperparameters? Actually, we because you know that in post in, in post estimation for non pre, uh, without using pre training or with using pre training, actually the performance are similar. So we mm. choose the hyperparameters actually based on small data set MP two. Maybe you know MP two data set, and mm. in few number of epochs. Mm. We assumed that the conclusion or the observation for small data set 
and a freeway epochs will be will also hold in long epochs and uh, light data set. Actually, for po for post estimation, we found that the observation was convolution consistent. For other net for other problems, the conclusion might not might not might not be consistent. Interesting. So yes. that's a good uh, rule of thumb, by the way. We also use it. Um, when you do hyperparameters, you can do four days training just for each type of parameter. You have to find workarounds. And this is a, this is a very oh. common type of workaround. Small data set, uh, less epochs. Um, another, uh, another, another point I want to share is that, so for example, in the, in the image pre training, we do not change any hyperparameter. I, this means that all the hyperparameters for, I mean, the training hyperparameters are the same to resonate. Mm -hmm. So of course, we may have higher result if we change the hyperparameters, but you know that this will take more time. Yeah. So by the way, we, as, as I mentioned before, we started the h one design from segmentation task. Actually, we changed to human post estimation, I think maybe September, September in 2018. This means mm -hmm. that we, September and then, and then October and then November, November, November mid, the deadline of CPI. Just we complete the design and then the experiment on human estimation within three months. This is amazing speed. Um, this, this, very unusual. <laughs> it takes this more not, than a year. This is not unusual because we have experience on human post, human post estimation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, also leads me to the next question. Um, so you had a lot of evaluations done, tests done, different types of models. Uh, this is another, this is a lot of work. Um, there's, there's, there's probably been an, more manpower there than just you or, or maybe somebody else. Can you, can you share how many people really hands-on worked on the network and did the tests and everything? You mean net, net, what, net what? How many people were, uh, were working hands-on? on this network, um, on evaluating it, building it, testing the code, testing the network. Well, how many people were in the research team in these three months? Oh, you, you, oh, you mean you my team, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> your team, of course. <laughs> yeah. So we have two, one student and then one, one team. One student and, and one what? One, one software, software developer. Wow. It's just two people in three months. This is uh, nice. I know that for segmentation, we have, uh, for segmentation, we have additional, I think, maybe five months. For mm -hmm. detection, we have two students. Mm -hmm. It's half a year. This means we one year for object detection. <laughs> mm -hmm. For estimation, because it looks easier, because one day we actually, had a strong experience on human post estimation. Yeah, this is the good thing experience. Yeah, 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 was, we can yeah. complete it in, in three months. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. That's very nice. Um, so I have a couple of technical questions also about about the code because you know I, I went through it. I think I reverse engineered most of it. <laughs> so and there were some stuff that interests me. Um, just let me know if it's a uh, you know, too specific. We don't have to really dive into them. So one thing I saw was there was this area from uh, where the image is scaled from the full image to the bounding box. It's under HRNet, right? The original HRNet mm -hmm. code. That's called the box to center scale. And there is a usage there of pixel standard deviation of 200 um, on the scaling. And I wasn't sure why this 200 was, was set. It wasn't so written also anywhere in the code to figure out. Um, so if you can mention something about it, uh, it, it, it could help understand. You mean the, the, some parameter setting, right? 200, uh, the, the name of the parameter was pixel STD, pixel standard deviation. This oh, was, 
Yeah, this was for scaling. <laughs> and it was set to 200, hard coded set to 200. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how we stated the parameters exactly, but we, we just follow maybe some previous, uh, some previous codes and stated the parameters. Yeah. Mm. We do not uh, did uh, enough studies to tune the parameters. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, and the next question, maybe the answer will be the same. Um, on the on the pause estimation part, there was uh, the construct of the of the different joints saved. This, their area saved was also saved under an object that was called joints 3D viz, which I think means like which which uh, which uh, how do you say uh, I forgot now. Which points and the, which joints are visible and which are not visible, and if they are visible, where in the bounding box they're visible. But what I noticed there was that it's every object in that uh, data set was uh, from three coordinates. The last one is supposed to be the visibility flag, and it was always uh, set to zero. Always, it's, it wasn't used. So yeah. I was wondering. Yeah, go ahead. This is also a good question. We actually. We do not change those. We just follow previous method. Yeah, this is a good point. Actually, we do not handle the visibility, the visibility mm. of the joints. Yeah. Ah, okay. So it was just because of previous code you found. That's good to know. I thought maybe yeah. it's like um, it, you prepared it for higher HR mid because there there is more uh, emphasis on this area or something. Oh. Uh, yeah. One, one, one thing I would like to share for, for high HR8. And then the reason actually you we need careful implementation. Mm -hmm. We for for example in higher H United higher H United for the map estimation, we need to handle up sampling. Mm -hmm. If you look at look at the uh, the the implementation, there's some there's some parameter, for example, point is point five zero shift, right? Right. This actually follow the follow the uh, I think is the maybe I'm not sure the, our class implementation. So actually okay. we have we have done some analysis why point five. It's just from theory. Mm -hmm. It's also based on how to implement the I think. Of, I think the the convolution or by by linear by linear interpolation in PyTorch implementation. If you look at the PyTorch implementation, they they so called aligned version or unaligned version. Maybe you check you can check it carefully. This also this also influence the down sampling down sampling process. This means that the center point will be shift. Shift to 1.5, I think a 1.5 pixel. So mm. it's why 0.5 we, <laughs> it, okay. it, we choose. Yeah. That's important to know. These things um, there are many, there are are many different yeah. yeah. influence in the, the result. <laughs> yes, exactly. These things, if these are exactly the things that we don't have access to. And now that you're here with us talking, we understand better. These are exactly the points that are interesting, those details that are sometimes missing, but have a lot of spunk to them. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for the answer. Um, what else I had here? Oh yeah, but by the way, another thing on the HRNet code, um, mm -hmm. on the inference part, mm -hmm. there was a pipeline of accuracy calculation um, for the inference, just for like, you know, testing the, the model, not for doing uh, any accuracy testing, but just for to look, look with your own eyes at the results. There's a mm -hmm. full pipeline for accuracy calculation, but it's not really used. And actually the calculation there is, is, is not correct because it's using uh, like randomly selected uh, poses, not really from the data set. Um, I wonder if it's like something you, you left out for later to fix because it's not really important or, or was there any other reason for this? Oh, this is a good question. Maybe you can send an email about the detail as about well the question. I did yeah, not yeah. remember. It's not the blog post also. I just okay. sent this part. Unfortunately, no problem. I read it done for myself. No, thank you. Um, this is, um, these are all my questions, I think. 
Mm -hmm. Anybody else who's here, if you have any questions, please ask uh, now. Um, and if not, we will finish. Um, do you know, this slide, will you be able to share with us? The PDF? I can, I can, I can send the PDF version to you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think uh, in, in, uh, yeah, I have some concluding remarks, if no questions. Um, so again, everybody, thanks for joining. We still have uh, these uh, live events. People usually log off after a while, but here we have like more than 20 along the entire talk, 12 left. So it means that people really found this interesting. Um, thank you everybody for, for the participation, for, for asking questions, for, for you know, commenting also on Reddit. Um, this is so cool that this community is evolving and I want it to grow more and more for us. I think um, it's very, it's beneficial for everybody everywhere that we could have these types of uh, quality, um, like Jing Dong had here for us this lecture and accessibility to everybody. Um, we're almost at a thousand uh, registered people now on the newsletter. Um, I'm going to, by the way, send the link to the newsletter now. And I will also, I'm also sending again the link to our Reddit where you can, it's in the group channel, in the group chat now. There's the link to the Reddit where you can find all the different lectures that are upcoming, that were before the recordings. There's the Discord server where we have instant messaging within the group. People are asking questions there and sharing information. The YouTube channel, this is where I'll upload also this recording that we have now. Um, and the newsletter where I update of upcoming lectures and, and already uploaded recordings. Next lecture again will be about uh, 360 images processing with deep learning, a paper from CVPI 2020. Um, yeah, I am always looking for interesting uh, teachers to come and teach us and, and, and show us their, their work and share with us their knowledge. If anybody knows of anybody uh, like this, please uh, send them over and we will try to have them on. Um, any comments, any things you want to share, please share in our groups. You have the links. Ding Dong, really, thank you so much. This was very interesting. Uh, I learned a lot uh, from this, even though I, before I studied this topic, I still uh, there was a lot for me to learn from you. Thank you for, for joining us today and giving the talk. Um, and uh, I see here uh, messages from people. I look forward. Yeah, thank you everybody for the kind messages also. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I will say bye now. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. I will send the PDF version to you later. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I will send you an email with everything we talked, with the references, the, the things that we need, and uh, you will have it so you can send it. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Okay, I'm logging off. Bye-bye. Bye all. Bye. Bye.